Electronics. This is a part two of IPRC solutions. Okay, so in the part one, we have discussed some 20 questions. In this video, we'll be discussing almost 20 questions. Okay, so by part three, we'll be completing the entire question paper of 2018 IPRC technical assistant examination. Okay, so let us see what is the first question for today's video. Okay, I, I also wanted to inform you once again that these questions were mainly rooting on the core concepts of electronics. Uh, there were not much problematic questions, but may, uh, basically the questions uh, were from the concepts, the theory, uh, various operations of various uh, components, various amplifiers and questions regarding the, uh, the features of those amplifiers. These were mainly the uh, area of the question papers. Okay, so moving on to the first question, a FET is dash, a high input resistance. B. Very low input resistance. C. High connection emitter junction forward bias P injection. So, this C and D are not FET. You know that it is not a high connection emitter junction. It is also not a forward bias P injection. So, from these two options which is related to FET, they are asking the feature of field effect transistor. The field effect transistors are having very high input resistance. Okay. So, the correct answer is the FET. FET is having high input resistance. So, whenever you Google regarding the FET or JFET, they are having high input impedance. Okay. So, that is the main feature of a FET. And why this high input impedance is kept? In order to avoid the error signals or noises, this generally in OPAM also we know that the input impedance is very kept as very high or it is very high. Okay. So, the correct answer for this question is option A is the correct answer. Moving on to the next question, let me remove this and make some space. So, if you have, uh, whenever you are studying these components, if you have studied it very thoroughly, that is uh, by not, not just mugging up all those theories, by if you know the main concepts, you should be scoring high mark. Next question is, in a class A amplifier, the output current flows for dash. The uh, answer is, I have not written the options because you know that the basic feature of a class A power amplifier is that the output current flows for the entire cycle of input signal or for entire uh, cycle or entire waveform the output current will be flowing. So whatever you are going to give with the input side this amplifier that is a class A amplifier is going to amplify the signal entirely. So the Output current will be flowing for the entire cycle. And this is how the basic structure of a, I'll show it a little bit clearly. Okay. So this is how the class A amplifier will be looking. You are going to apply uh, input to the base region. You are going to take the output from the collector side. There is a emitter uh, capacitor connected through the or parallel to the emitter resistance okay so this is a basic structure also there is circuitry for applying of uh, input there is a voltage divider circuitry and also there is uh, that is load resistor can be connected to the output side also this is a basic thing you can also have input and output sessions okay so the main feature of whenever you somebody is asking you the main feature of a class a amplifier this is a main feature that the output current flows uh, during the entire AC cycle or the entire input cycle and you will be getting the entire signal that is input signal getting amplified at the output side. Okay, so that is all about class A amplifier and this is a basic thing you should be knowing and you should know that this is a structure. Next question. What are the three terminals of a triac? I'll draw it first and then I'll tell it. Okay. A triac. Is looking like this. Okay, this is A2, this is A1 and this is gate. Now you should be able to answer this question if you know this structure. Okay, so uh, it consists of what all terminals? A1 is nothing but anode, A2 is also anode, G is gate. So the terminals are anode, anode, gate. Okay, or you can write like this gate, anode and anode. That is, there are two anodes are one gate is a structure of a triac. Okay, moving on to the next question. 
the damping factor of a system is unity the system is dash okay so the question is regarding the damping factor of a system so you should know based on the damping factor systems can be classified as critically damped sorry critically damped where the damping factor tau is equal to 1 when under damped please note this down okay when tau is less than 1 over damped so this is how you can classify systems based on the damping factor if damping factor is equal to 1 it is called critically damped if it is less than 1 under damped uh, just like we say for modulated systems, over modulated system, under modulated system, likewise we say, right. So just like that, for damping factor or based on the damping factor, we can classify this as critically damped if it is equal to 1. If it is less than 1, means under damped. Over damped means greater than 1. Very simple. So the question is, the damping factor of a system is unity, means is equal to 1. The system is critically damped, okay. B is the correct answer. Moving on to the next question. So these are very uh, small questions, but you should know the concepts. Only, the, only those thing is important. The ability of a radio receiver to respond only to the radio signal it is tuned to and reject the other nearby signals is called dash. That is. There is a radio receiver and it is only receiving the signal to which it is tuned to receive. And the other signals it is going to reject. What is this property? This is called selectivity. Selectivity it is. Okay. This is called the selectivity of the receiver to select only the particular signal to which it is tuned to. And there is another term called sensitivity. These two terms you should know. Selectivity and sensitivity. Sensitivity means the, the weakest signal it can receive. How much less power or how much minimal power this, uh, this receiver can receive. And that is called sensitivity. So from the term itself, it's also a very, in general also we can relate these two words. Selectivity means selecting the particular signal. Sensitivity means very, very sensitive skin or sensitive uh, system means the minimum signal it can receive or the minimum weakest signal it can receive is called the sensitivity of the radio receiver. Okay. Next set of questions is this. The main characteristics of Darlington amplifier is dash. Okay. So what is actually a Darlington amplifier? Darlington pair. There is a Darlington pair. That is if you connect two transistors like this. That is connecting the emitter towards the base of this next transistor. So, this will be the total base of this particular circuit. This is the collector, this is the emitter. So, we are actually pairing of two transistors like this. And this pair of two transistors, that is if you connect the transistors like this, here we are going to connect. And we are going to couple these two collectors together. This is the emitter of this pair this is the collector common to both the transistors and we are applying input here and the output of this one sorry the emitter of this one first transistor is getting to the second one and this is called Darlington pair this is also another important question there are two transistors Q1 and Q2 once emitter is connected to the base of the second one this pair is called Darlington pair okay so I hope this Darlington pair is now familiar to you. So the question is the main characteristics of Darlington pair is dash. The main characteristics of Darlington pair or Darlington amplifier is where the main characteristics is this. It is having a very high input impedance, very low output impedance and very uh, high current gain. Okay. So this is the main features of a Darlington amplifier and this is how a Darlington amplifier is looking like. Okay. So I hope it is clear. So, uh, if you, if somebody is asking you what is a Darlington pair, it is nothing but connecting of two BJTs together. That is, if uh, the emitter of the first BJT is connected to the base and you are applying input to the first BJT's base and taking the output from the emitter of the second BJT, this is called a Darlington pair. I hope this is clear. Moving on to the next question. The frequency to which the incoming signal is changed 
in super heterodyne resorption is called nothing but intermediate frequency. So we know that in the uh, case of a super heterodyne receiver, this, uh, the signal will be coming at a higher frequency. We change the frequency in the mixer to a uh, intermediate frequency then we convert it to the audio range frequency and we receive it okay so here first it is converted to the intermediate frequency okay so the correct answer is it is first changed to intermediate frequency is the answer the number of frames per second in tv system in india so this question is connected to the tv systems or tv system that we follow in india so Based on the international TV standards, there are various standards. The first one is PAL. This is the standard we follow in India. There is another standard called NTSC. There is another one called SECOM. So these are various TV, international TV standards. And these various standards follow various features. So based on the TV reception, uh, these standards are classified. In India, we follow PAL system. Okay, so these systems or these TV standards vary in the number of frames they send per second and based on various other things, the frequency, the various things, the features are different. So in India, if somebody is asking you what is a TV standard we follow in India, it is nothing but PAL. PAL is the uh, it's a standard we follow in India. In USA, it is NTSC. Okay, so the, likewise, various countries, if you Google it, you can see that various countries opt various standards. Mainly, these are the three standards. Okay, I don't know whether there is uh, any other much variations of it, but if you uh, generally Google it, you can see these three standards are the international TV standards. And India follows PAL system. NTSC is followed in USA and there is another one called SECOM which is followed by various other countries. Okay, so basically they differ in the number of frames sending per second and the question is the number of frames per second in TV system in India. So you should think of PAL now and it is having how many frames per second? 25 frames per second. NTSC generally sent 30 frames per second and there is another number for SECOM also. Okay, so you should know this thing. PAL, NTSC and SECOM are the various international TV standards and for the case of India it is PAL and the number of frames per second is nothing but 25. Okay, so the correct answer for this question is 25. Moving on to the next question. Vaporization refers to the change of state from dash to dash. So this is again not really related to engineering but generally related to the material science or, or Basic things you study in 12th. So what is vaporization? Vaporization is nothing but change of state from liquid, liquid to gas. We say it is called vaporization. Now what is the change of state from solid directly to gas? It is called sublimation. Okay, so these are the some things I just wanted to inform you. So, liquid to gas, if it is changing, it is called vaporization. If it is from solid to gas, directly we know that camphor, camphor it get sublimated. From the direct uh, solid state, the camphor, we know camphor it is changed to gaseous state. Okay. So, if you open up this camphor and put it in some place for some time, we, we, we know that it get vanishes. So, that is, it is changing from the solid state directly to the gaseous state. It is called sublimation. Okay. Next question. Audio frequency range. So these are very basic questions you may have uh, studied it while uh, studying general awareness or such type of questions are also there. Audio frequency range is from dash to dash. That is audio frequency range. And the audio frequency range we know, everybody is knowing, that is the audio audible frequency range to humans or generally audio frequency range is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz okay so if you still have doubt in this please note this doubt it is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz is a audible frequency range or audio frequency range the next set of questions is this 
whenever conductor cuts magnetic flux and emf is induced in the conductor this is according to dash law this is according to faraday's law okay so this is called faraday's law that is whenever any uh, a conductor is cutting a magnetic flux this is a working principle of this coils we have discussed while discussing inductor session this is nothing but the faraday's law and based on this an emf is generated and this inductor is trying to change this or oppose this production of emf so these all things are basics of inductors moving on to the next question slew rate of op-amp indicate dash slew rate we have discussed while discussing the op-amp video also slew rate is actually the ability or the uh, ability of a op-amp or the ability of the output voltage that is how fast the output voltage can change to meet the change in the uh, input that is how fast the output voltage of the op-amp can change is indicating slew rate and the slew rate should be very fast okay so slew rate is the uh, of an op-amp indicates that how fast the output voltage can change so from the option you have to select this option that how fast the voltage can change the options can be various like how fast the current can change how fast the uh, resistance or anything can change it is nothing but uh, in terms of op-amp we take voltages so how fast the voltage output voltage can change is called slew rate and the unit is volt per microseconds okay unit is nothing but volt per microsecond is a unit of slew rate Moving on to the next question, let me remove this to make some space. So these are nothing but theory questions only. For op-amp having differential gain AV, common mode gain AC, CMRR is what? CMRR is CMRR is equal to differential mode gain by common mode gain. CMRR is common mode rejection ratio. So it is the ability to reject common mode signals. So it is AV by AC, differential mode gain by common mode gain. Next question, the control pin, uh, that is pin 5, on triple 5 timer IC is normally connected to ground. That is the pin 5 of triple 5 timer IC is connected to ground through capacitor to dash. It is for uh, the case of a triple 5 timer IC, the pin 5 is connected to ground through a capacitor to prevent the false trigger false triggering due to the presence of noise at that pin okay so there can be some false triggering of the triple five timer ic due to the presence of some noise signals at the pin five to avoid that pin five is connected to ground okay so you should be knowing this we have also discussed about triple five timer ic or triple five timer connection in our previous videos okay so you should know that the pin 5 is connected to ground to avoid false triggering okay next let me read out some theory questions maximum amount of reverse voltage which can be applied on a diode before breakdown that is the maximum reverse voltage which can be applied to the diode before breakdown is called peak inverse voltage okay it is called peak inverse voltage and the voltage at which the breakdown is happening is called breakdown voltage. Okay. And the voltage, these are some voltages related to the diode. And the voltage at which the diode is getting forward biased is called built-in potential or it is called threshold voltage. Okay. These are some voltages you should know. So, the maximum reverse voltage before breakdown, that is, which can be applied before breakdown is called PIV or peak inverse voltage. Breakdown is happening at breakdown voltage. The diode is getting turned on or started conducting at built-in potential. We generally call it as built-in potential or threshold voltage. Okay. So, these are some voltages you should know. Now, the answer for this question is peak inverse voltage. Moving on to the next question. This is also a very simple theory question. That's why I'm not writing it. Please listen. The purpose of the oscilloscope is to provide the uh, provide the user with a graphical representation of, I'll read out the options, voltage versus time, B, phase shift versus capacitance, 
C. Resistance versus voltage. D. Current versus resistance. C. The purpose of oscilloscope is to provide the representation or the graphical representation of voltage versus time. So we generally call it as amplitude and frequency. But that amplitude is nothing but the voltage. So it is actually giving a graphical representation of voltage versus time. So that is a oscilloscope. So I am sure that you have used this oscilloscope in your college laboratories. Okay, so these oscilloscope represent graphically the waveforms as voltage versus time representations. Okay, so it is nothing uh, related to current or resistance or anything, but voltage versus time is a representation. Okay, so that is a oscilloscope. Now moving on to this question. The question is the fourth harmonic of a fundamental frequency is 512 hertz. What is the fundamental frequency? Okay. So I will tell you how this second harmonic, third harmonic and fourth harmonic are expressed. If F is the fundamental frequency, I am I'm, I'm teaching you the theory thing. If F is a fundamental frequency, then second harmonic is nothing but F into 2. Okay, this is second harmonic. Third harmonic is F into 3. Fourth harmonic is F into 4. Okay, so this is the relation. If you don't know, please note this down. Harmonics means nothing but multiples. Okay, second harmonic means second multiple. Third harmonic means third multiple. Fourth harmonic means, four, that is the fundamental frequency is fourth multiple. Or into 4 is the 4th harmonic. Now in the question, 4th harmonic is being given to you. Okay, we will remove this too. So, very simple now. F into 4 is given as 512 hertz. Now what is F? Is a question. So, you can find F is equal to 512 by 4, which is something but 128 hertz is the fundamental frequency. I hope it is clear. So, what is the fundamental frequency? It is 128 or 128 hertz is the fundamental frequency. So, I hope the concept of second harmonic, third harmonic and everything is now clear. Answer is 120 hertz. So, these are the questions which I have included in this video. I know that the questions are not so problematic or uh, circuit problems because these were the questions from IPRC technical assistant uh, question paper of 2018. Okay, so uh, uh, so many people are telling me that uh, ma'am do more questions from the numerical side uh, and also uh, do more questions from the circuit analysis session also. Uh, yes, that are important and again with that, that is also being given the same marking just as that of these theory questions also. So uh, my request is that uh, yes, you have to follow on the circuit questions and also you have to follow on these concepts also. Okay, so uh, there, there are a lot of theory things. Uh, for example, if you are studying the case of an amplifier, you don't have to mug up all the working of those things. You have to go for the points. So that is how you have to uh, study the topics. You have to take a topic. You have to uh, know the important things. So these important things or important concepts will be asked in the examination. Okay, so uh, in this video, uh, I think we have get familiarized with the Darlington amplifier, with the case of damping and various other things uh, were included in this video. I hope that those things were useful for your preparation. Uh, with the part 3, we will be winding up this IPRC technical assistant solutions of 2018 because IPRC examination is also coming. And also many people has uh, uh, mailed me and also commended that ma'am the HSFC admit card is available now and the examination is going to happen at the end of March. Okay, so we'll be starting the uh, formula revision videos and everything for the HSFC preparation very soon. So don't worry for that. Uh, we'll be uh, uploading all those videos and I'm adding all the videos for the technical assistant in the ISRO technical assistant playlist. Okay. There's a lot of videos included in that playlist. There is a previous year questions of various question papers for various locations. NISAC, uh, VSSC, HSFC. So those uh, solution videos are there. 
and all the important formula revision videos and all the important subject videos I have included for especially for ISRO technical assistant preparation in that playlist. So please do watch that playlist. I am sure that will be helpful for you. And also you, if you found this video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and also share this video with maximum of friends. Please make uh, other people also know that uh, I am doing preparation classes for technical assistant because many people are still not aware of it. Okay. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel and also please do tell your friends to subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.